It's the Raya Podcast. This is the Tuesday, August 8th edition. And if you're watching the video version of the podcast on our Radio Uriah YouTube or Facebook, you would see the remnants of Krispy Kreme donuts. We had a food fight this morning. Yeah, we did. Of course, you can also watch that on the Radio Uriah Facebook page and YouTube channel. The donuts we tried today, Krispy Kreme's new pumpkin spice collection of donuts. That they put out. Uh, it launched yesterday, August seventh, and for many people, we, we I think we even heard this uh, maybe a little bit from you yesterday that it's too early. Some would say for pumpkin spice to start making its way everywhere. It is pretty early. So Does it feel like fall to anybody yet? Not probably. Can't. Probably not many. So here's my question then: At what time of year? If you got to pick the date, this is the date the pumpkin spice stuff is allowed to start, where it actually feels appropriate, what date would that be? That's a good question. I think for me, because I'm looking now, I wanted to know how long it went for usually. Mm -hmm. We know like the head of pumpkin spice is probably Starbucks, right? Of course. Most people would agree with that. Mm -hmm. And traditionally it says... The pumpkin spice ends in, like, November. Okay, makes sense. Like, later November uh-huh. for, for uh, pumpkin spice. So, now I think about it. So, we've got, right now, August, September, October, November. I think probably early September it early, can start. Yeah. September, we can do September, October, and then right when we get to Thanksgiving, uh-huh. I think once we get... Two Thanksgiving pumpkin spice done. Yes. Over. Makes sense. That gives you a full three months. That That gives you 12 weeks of pumpkin spice. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. I think even when you get a couple weeks into September, the weather tends to still feel pretty closer to summer than fall. Yeah. Like, that, well, how many leaves are changing in, it's still hot. in early September? Early September, for most places, it's still hot. So, like, you were doing pool. People were doing boats on Labor Day. Yeah. But, but the, the fall, the issue is that pumpkin spice also kind of goes hand in hand. I feel like it's kind of like football season, and football season now starts for college. I mean, we're talking the NFL preseason's already started, college starts. But this isn't real yet. But even college starts Labor Day. Like, that's when it really yeah. gets started. NFL week one starts September 10th. And that's all, the weekend after Labor Day. And for people that don't care about football, maybe pumpkin spice season is their football in a way. Like, this is how they know we're moving through the year. Or And, we, you know, as football fans, we, we would love to have football earlier and earlier every year. So I understand why it's moved forward. And, and if you do like pumpkin spice and football, sometimes they go hand in hand. You want to have some pumpkin spice for those early football games. But... I think for it to feel seasonably appropriate, you're talking like September 15th around there. See, I thought September well 14th after Labor Day. is what I thought. Yeah, well, either way, well after Labor Day, at least a week after Labor Day. Yeah, I'm with that. I think that would be appropriate. But... I agree upon that because now that we just tried it, uh, what is today, August 8th? Uh-huh. Now we're not talking pumpkin spice. What do you mean? It's over. This is it. This we just is... did it. Hopefully everybody was ready. Yeah. Because it's over now. Well, then if this is the last time we can talk about it, I got one more question. Yeah. What is the premier pumpkin spice item then? Because like every, there's pumpkin spice everything these days. That's a big question. It's not donuts. You don't think so? No. I think donut pumpkin donuts are in the in the equation of possible best pumpkin spice item. For donuts? I think the donuts are better than, everybody talks about the pumpkin spice latte. I think donuts are better than a latte for sure. What about the goldfish? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any other any Because other on ideas? this list here, it's ranked number one. No, it's not. It is. It's I ranked mean, number were, one. I feel like I think they were good, but. Number two, we've got uh, the cereal, pumpkin spice Cheerios. I, I bet you those are good. Uh, what else do we have here? Twinkies, pumpkin spice Twinkies at the, near the top of this Makes list. Makes sense. The natural. Marshmallows. Combo. Okay, that's we got definitely wrong. The pumpkin spice latte. Uh-huh. Ooh, bakery pumpkin pudding. See? Are we not is it not is it not donuts? Pumpkin spice hot chocolate. It's gotta be donuts. Dairy Queen pumpkin by 
Blizzard. No. Definitely not. What about pumpkin spice enhanced cookie dough? Hmm. That doesn't sound as good. Doesn't sound, I, I can't think of, especially not even these Krispy Kreme donuts, but you go to like, uh, like a fair or something, like a fall festival mm. that has like freshly homemade kind of style, like a, a your local donut shop doing a pumpkin donut. That's got to be the best thing. So you're thinking, are you thinking pumpkin or are you thinking pumpkin spice? What's the difference? They're the same thing. There's a difference. It's a different name. Well, it's the same thing. Then what about pumpkin pie? Yeah, but that's different. Oh, now that's, that's different. That's different. Yes. Now that's different. What about pumpkin roll? Pumpkin roll is good. Pumpkin that's, roll is the top item if that's allowed to be in these, yeah, I think. I think I agree with that. Pumpkin roll is fire. Yeah. It's so good every time. Yeah. Pumpkin pie good too, but pumpkin roll... A good think, pumpkin roll is better than just about any other pumpkin thing. Pretty, I think so, too. Pretty sure on that. We agree oh. on that. This is a lot of pumpkin talk for August, but that's the way some people want it. And this Apparently. is the end of it. This okay. is the end this of it. This is it. Until the, another new pumpkin item comes out. Hopefully there's no more. Enjoy the podcast. See you guys. Nobody does it better. The Riot Radio U. Do you ever remember thinking when you were a kid, a child? Like, for example, if I let a spider bite me, maybe I'll turn into Spider-Man. You no. Ever, you ever thought, you never had that thought process? When I was a child, I wasn't like a huge Spider-Man fan. Okay. So did you ever think like, oh, maybe if I get exposed to some kind of gamma radiation, I could turn into the Hulk or something like that? No, I never really went through a phase like that. You where never... I just like thought really silly things. Or at least you, I don't remember that. You didn't have any kind of a little delusional thoughts because you just didn't understand? Maybe when I was like really young and now I've gotten to the point where I've forgotten, which uh, is better that way. Well, I mean, I think it's it's somewhat somewhat normal for children to believe that. But most children don't don't ever get bitten by a spider and then just for the purpose of trying to become a superhero. But that's exactly what I have here in Bolivia, the country of Bolivia. I have an eight-year-old boy Huge Spider-Man fan. And he was out and about playing wherever kids play in Bolivia. And he came across not just any spider. He came across a black widow spider. <laughs> I'm in danger. That's a serious spider. That's one of the worst of all, some might say. And so he, though, not afraid of the black widow spider. In fact, maybe drawn to the black widow spider because of the markings on it. It looks like it would give you superpowers when you look at it. It does. The the little red hourglass on the back, black uh, background. It kind of looks heroic in a way. It looks like a superhero's emblem. Well, it is. It is. You well, never heard yeah, of, I guess Black Widow. You've never heard of Black Widow? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she did not get her powers from a spider. But this kid, enticed by the spider, huge Spider-Man fan, he manages to pick up and coax this spider onto him and allow the spider to bite him. The black no. widow spider bites this child, this eight year old child. And so what a strong kid. I mean, he wanted those powers. He, he was locked really in. did. He's like, I, I, I need some great power so I can have some great responsibility. He was thinking. And so he let a spider crawl on his body. You know how afraid I was of spiders when I was a little kid. Yeah. Strong. I mean, he knew what he wanted. Yeah. He, and he went after it. And at first, he, although he started apparently feeling some symptoms, as of course you would, he went at least, they say, about three hours where he dealt with the pain and, and agony that come with a spider bite, like body aches and muscle spasms. He probably thought that it's he working. He was transforming. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> getting stronger, he was thinking. I can feel it. But, hey, becoming uh, a superhero isn't easy. I'm no. going to have to go through some pain to get Spider-Man's powers. And you know what? If you're a superhero, if you're Spider-Man, you cannot let anybody know. No. You're going to have a secret identity. So yeah, you especially can't if just, you're Spider-Man. Yeah. You can't just go be blabbing to mom because then that could put her in danger. And so he went about three hours before he, it finally got so bad that he had to confess to his mom that he had allowed a colorful spider to bite him. And at that point... He was taken to the hospital. They called in some experts, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, uh, they gave him the right treatment, and this little kid survived, which still kind of makes him a superhero. I don't think most eight-year-olds, you get bit by a black widow spider. That feels like that could be deadly to most people, especially yeah, when you're deadly. that tiny. And like going for three hours, like there's no way I would have even made it that long. Yeah. That sounds like such a long time. Yeah, for me, that's a no-go. Yeah. Not even for Spider-Man's powers. It if wouldn't anything, be worth it. 
he would have gotten like Black Widow's powers, which is yeah. way less cool. And all those superpowers sometimes, I mean, they could be nice, but they also, uh, as we've seen in the movies, they can be a lot of trouble. Way too much trouble, especially for an eight-year-old. Too, yeah, too much to handle. You can't handle He that. wasn't ready. How many eight-year-old superheroes do you know? It's very Not few. Not many. This is Radio U's Worst of the Riot. I have here the number one thing that people notice when they look at your dating profile. The top thing they're going to see. Nerve-wracking. Yeah. Is everyone ready? This is, there's a lot of pressure right here. The number one thing that people notice when they are swiping through Tinder or Bumble or whatever it is, is your smile. I'm okay with that. Yeah, for you, that's good, right? Are you smiling in your pictures? I'm a big smiler. Yeah. I pretty much smile in every photo I'm in, I think. I don't know if I have any pictures well, of myself where I'm not smiling. You got chompers like that. You got to show them off, you know? That makes sense. So it makes sense. Uh, and it is true that what it says here is not, it's not what your smile looks like, although I'm sure that's important, but more so, are you smiling or not smiling? It's important. That's what people want to know. You don't want to have a dating profile pic, your leadoff picture. You do not want that to look all dour and sad or too serious. You want to look like you're a happy, fun-loving person that uh, likes to have a good time. Yeah, you have to. And I think, too, if you aren't smiling in your photos, when I would go through on the dating profiles, mm -hmm. if you weren't smiling in your photos, like if you didn't have a single photo smiling, showing yeah. teeth, then I just assume that you've got just like wild teeth. That could be. Yeah. Like if you're just if you're smirking in every photo, then I just assume that you don't have that you've got like really wild teeth. Because if you had real nice ones, you'd yeah. smile. Either you're a real upset person. Angry little guy. With no no joy in life. Yeah. Or or you're real ashamed of your teeth. Which uh, I mean, if they're if they're kind of wacky, I understand. It's it's uh it is something that you don't exactly feel proud of showing off, but then again, it's better than looking like you're like you're grumpy. Yeah, like you're yeah, exactly like an angry little man. Yeah. And you got to show off the teeth. You got to show off the teeth, the smile. And this actually it not only goes for dating profiles, but this goes for when you're meeting new people in general. Uh according to this survey, which was done uh for a dating app, but they ask questions about like what makes a positive first impression? What are the first things you notice about people generally when you meet them too? And so I guess this would mean when you go out on a date or just in business or whatever, too, just just meeting new people. The smile is the first thing in person or online. You want to smile when you meet new people. You want to put that forward. Otherwise, people might they're going to they're going to get a bad first impression. They're going to be off. But I think that's important, too, like because, you know, people that when you talk to them, they're like big smilers and they're really expressive. And then, you know, people that when you talk to them, they like don't show any emotion. Uh huh. And it just kind of makes me a little nervous. It's not quite as welcoming, uh, especially on a date, too. I mean, if you're going on a date, yeah. as, we'll do it as, as, as from a man's point of view. If you're taking a girl on a date and you're just being emotionless, I mean, it's going to come across as pretty odd. Yeah, kind of Not very welcoming. A little bit. It makes, uh, I mean, so Everybody's much Everybody's going to be more nervous. So much of the date is, uh, is body language and just trying to read. Do you think the other person's having a good time? Are they open to what I'm doing? Yeah. And uh, who I am, and uh, yeah, if, the, if you're not smiling, that's 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 a key. That's and a key it's like right there. on the other, if you flip it too, if the girl's the one who's like not smiling or being emotional, the guy's gonna start freaking out because he's the one who's like try, yeah. he's trying to drive trying conversation. To yeah. He's like, "What the heck? This is a terrible date. Gonna get all sweaty. It's not gonna be a good look for anybody." Yeah. So uh, no matter what your teeth look like, you gotta flash them a little more. Open Push them out there. Yeah. Open up those lips. Let people see what what's behind there. If podcast awards were ever a thing, this show wouldn't win any. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. USA Mullet Championship is coming up. I'm sure you have that marked on your calendar. Yeah, I've been just waiting for that year round. It's, uh, it's, it's a big all, year for mullets. So that makes it's, sense. It's always a big event. Mullets are back, at least according to... Uh, Fritos. They are. Now they have a vested interest because they are the the sponsor, the presenting sponsor of the USA Mullet Championships. But nevertheless, I mean, mullets are back in, right? They are, yeah. They're back, yeah. I mean, uh, doesn't Morgan Wallen have a mullet? He always has a mullet. He that always has change, a mullet. But they, they are but back he brought, in. Some might say he brought it back, though. 
country superstar Morgan Wallen. Well, Fritos is trying to bring the mullet back even further by offering you the opportunity to get a mullet for free. Because it is darn expensive. I mean, just a haircut in general. I don't think people that are getting mullets are paying for them. You don't think so? I think their friends are cutting them. It just happens to Actually, I think it's their friends uh, that are that are cutting them in their backyard. You think it's Rufus? Yeah, Rufus the you know. Hey, Rufus, get over here! Shave off them sideburns. I need mm-hmm. a shave. Precisely. Sure. Shave sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you could get a real bona fide mullet that's gonna look real nice, though, courtesy of Fritos. And all you need to do is uh, sign up every Friday this month through August. 25th, you can book a free, they call it a Fritos Flow mullet haircut at Floyd's Barbershop locations throughout the country. You just have to visit uh, Floyd's Barbershop online and book your appointment and select the Fritos Flow mullet for your haircut that you want when you book your appointment. And then Floyd's and Fritos, they're going to take care of you, get you a nice free mullet free of charge, and then you'll be suited up and ready to enter the USA Mullet Championships when they come up in a few weeks. You ever considered a mullet? I've, I've, um, not exactly. I've had family members with mullets. My dad had a mullet for a long time. My... What do you mean? Like, how many... Was this, like, when you were alive? This is, like, a long time ago? uh uh-huh. It was probably... I don't know. Probably, like, how long ago was it? I don't know. He had a mullet for a long time. I remember him having a mullet growing up, and it was a huge deal among everyone he knew when he cut it off. That was like a topic of conversation for probably like three years after it was cut off. Oh well, what happened to the mullet, Hank? If you had a mullet, then it'd be pretty shocking when it goes. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, prominent hairstyle. It is, especially if you've had it long term. People Mm -hmm. will notice when you cut those long, luscious locks off. And so, yeah, my dad had one. My younger brother had one as well. So I don't know. Maybe that scared me off, but. You think about it too. Who's like, who's the best looking person with a mullet you can think of? The best looking person with yeah. a mullet. I don't know if I can think of anybody. That's tough, right? Apparently, I'm reading here. I've no, I can't picture this, but apparently Scarlett Johansson used to have a mullet. She did. She had a bleached one. That's a little different, though. I feel obviously Billy Ray Cyrus is the the famous. He he brought the mullet to prominence. There used to be a million hockey players back in the day, which was when my dad had a mullet. But that was just. Different times, you know? Completely different times. Now, when I, I typed in best looking mullets by celebrities, uh-huh. there's not many that are like recent photos. Yeah, they're probably from like the 80s. We've got some, we've got, I mean, there's David Spade. Uh-huh. That's Joe Dirt. That's Joe Dirt. Yeah. Billy Ray. That's I mean, not exactly like, oh, I want to look like Joe about, Dirt. Here we go. What about John Stamos? Yeah, yeah his was, mullet. I think he'd look good with any haircut. Yeah, that's true. Kurt Russell. <laughs> George Clooney had a oh, mullet Kurt for a Russell. little bit. Yet again, these guys, it doesn't matter what their haircut looks like. It's to me. Yeah, these are these ones are looking pretty good. But yeah. all these are old photos. No one has of new. Look, look at Brad Pitt with a mullet. Yeah. Whoa. All right, That's yeah. Right. We Different found some time. good ones. Yeah, we, I guess we did. I guess we did, but uh, but now in this modern day and age, not as much. But maybe that's about to change. Thanks to Fritos at Boyd's Barbershop. Oh, hi there. This worst of the riot. Crank that up. Radio U. Isaiah, if you were going to kill somebody, how would you do it? I'm not much of a killer. No, but if you had to. I don't even know. Don't act like you haven't thought about it before. Wait, wait, what's the best answer to this? You mean to strangle someone? Uh, Strangling? I don't know. That You have to have a lot of... Yeah, I mean, you have to be dead inside yourself to be able to do that to somebody, right? I think you had to kill someone, you had to do that to, to be like to, that too. To watch, yeah, but like there's more, uh, strangling is so face-to-face, you'd have to watch them die. That'd be... What's I your mean, go-to? What's like, your go-to move? Have a heart, you know? How do you kill people? <laughs> uh, so, oh, definitely poisoning. A poisoning? Yeah. It'd be much harder to get caught, wouldn't you say? Are you worried about getting caught, huh? Yeah, right. I guess I'm just more of an honest man. I think if I had to kill somebody, I'd just turn myself in. Oh, that's right. You'd just be like, well, I had to kill them. How am I going to live with myself afterwards? I couldn't. I know it's a crime, but I couldn't not kill them. So I'm going to do the the, the honest and just thing here. I'm going to turn myself in. But I think for me, I think poisoning would have to be the way to go. 
But uh, apparently, even when you try to poison somebody, you can get caught because that's exactly what happened. Listen to this crook, this criminal, this outlaw. A woman named Melody Johnson. She is accused of trying to poison her one time husband with bleach. She was trying to bleach him to death. Apparently, and this, this, this makes it even worse. This all began when her and her husband were in Germany. The reason they were in Germany, this guy is uh, the husband in the Air Force. She's not just trying to kill anybody. She's trying Serving to kill. Serving our country. I know. A veteran. Not good enough for Melody Johnson. Apparently, they were, they were going through the beginnings of a divorce. And she started to try to sneak some bleach into his coffee. She thought that would do it. That would do the trick. And who would, who would know? Who would be the wiser? But apparently her husband was the wiser. Roby Johnson, his name. He started to notice his coffee tasted a little funny. And he got suspicious. And so he... Happened to have some pool chemical test strips anyways. And he Smart test, man. tested the water. Never trust the woman. Tested the coffee and found that it was coming back. Coming back some, uh, some questionable results. So he in- secretly installed security cameras. And sure enough, what did he find? But his, uh, his one-time lover was now trying to kill him with bleach. And uh, so he gathered enough evidence. And now... It's been taken to authorities, and this lady is behind bars for attempting to to murder her husband with bleach. Like, you would think if you are going to try to kill somebody, like, by poisoning them, you would just commit to doing it all at once. Yeah. A one-time cup. All you have to do is sneak one cup by him uh-huh. when he's not expecting it. But when you do 11 days in a row, uh-huh. like, at some point, he's going to catch on. Yeah, she, what well, she was trying to get... I mean, there's a couple things. One, I don't know if you can build up an immunity to bleach. Probably not. I don't recommend that. But maybe it, like, maybe, did she know? Was she sure? Maybe she was giving him not enough to kill him, clearly. But enough. Every day, just a little bit more. Yeah, until eventually, now, not only is the bleach not going to kill him, it's actually probably making him stronger in some way. Uh, But secondly, I would think the bleach, like, you can definitely smell it, right? Oh, Yeah. And I don't know. I've never tried drinking it because that's dumb and it could kill me. But can't taste good. I, I, there's no way it tastes good. You're not finishing the whole cup. Yeah, there's got to be poisons out there that are that that he wouldn't notice. I would think. Oh, you're thinking maybe she should have done some more research. Yeah, that's right. Bleach is a little bit too obvious. If you're gonna kill somebody, put in your homework. You know. Don't it's, just grab the first be, thing that says poison on it. That's in your right. House that says do not own. drink. Yeah, put in. Do a little bit of research. Put in the work to make sure that you don't wind up. Uh, Wind up like this, so yeah, she's yeah. Uh, she's she's now in some big trouble as she should be. She was trying to collect death benefits, uh-huh. stealing his money. Yeah, before uh, they headed on their separate ways. You unfortunately, can't, you can't do that while he's alive, and you can't do that if you're the one that killed him. Wasn't that a great riot clip? While you're here, you should watch more of our videos and subscribe so you don't miss what we do next.